What's going on guys? Stefan, s &E's Garage. Uh, as promised earlier in the uh, Communities tab on uh, YouTube, uh, we are here with a 2017 Honda Ridgeline. This is a very good uh, friend and family member of mine's car. And uh, they drove to us all the way from New York for us to take care of their, their truck today. Uh, so we're going to be doing front and rear pads and rotors. Um, as you've seen in my other videos, I always, you know, I steer towards Rebistos. They make great products. Uh, they're great pads, low brake dust, low noise, and they last a very long time. And we're also going to be adding some WeatherTech um, mud guards to this truck. He works in the construction field and he's always getting his truck muddy. I don't know if you can see, there's a ton of mud back there and he just wants to keep the mud off the paint. So I said, let's go with the WeatherTechs. Um, I did want to take a second just to thank our channel sponsor uh, that is going to be LazFit Auto Lighting. LazFit has a ton of great products for your, your car, truck, your SUV, uh, headlights, uh, switchback blinkers, uh, reverse lights, marker lights, any kind of LED lighting that you can think of, they will probably offer for your car. I'm going to drop a link uh, below uh, to their website. If you use that link to purchase, the channel does get a small kickback, and right now they are running a couple of sales. Uh, when you get on their website, you'll see they have various different coupon codes, uh, so definitely take advantage of that, save some money, get your car decked out with lighting. So the first thing I figured we'd do is tackle the brakes. We gotta get the wheels off. Uh, so when we have the front wheels off, after we do the front brakes, uh, I'm gonna do a separate video on doing the mud flaps. So let's, uh, let's focus on the front brakes first and uh, we'll take it from there. So I'm gonna get this car set up on a jack, put some jack stands under the front. We're gonna pull the wheels off. All right guys, so we went ahead, and pulled the front wheels off the ground. We still got the jack under there with a little bit of tension on it. We just got the pole up and out of the way. And we got our jack stands here underneath the front jacking points. You'll see Honda is nice enough to put a little spot exactly where they want <clears throat> the lift points to be. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull these wheels off. You're going to need a 22 millimeter socket. If you don't have an impact gun, you're going to want to loosen these before you lift the car up. I'm lucky enough to have an impact gun, so we're going to impact these lug nuts off, get the wheels off. All right, guys, so we got the front wheels off. I always like to stick the wheels under the vehicle, if at all possible. Um, sometimes the car is just not high enough to do that. But the reason I like doing this is if for some reason these jack stands or this jack or something were to fail and I'm under the car, I have all that room. The car is going to land on the wheel instead of me. Yeah, it might mess the wheel up a little bit. It ain't going to hurt me. And that's what's most important. So we're going to go ahead and start disassembling these brakes. We're going to pull these two nuts off, get the caliper off, or these two bolts. And then we're going to take the caliper bracket bolts off. So let's get our tools set up. Looks like we're going to need an impact screwdriver to remove the set screw. And then uh, we'll get everything off. So to get the caliper off of the bracket, it's going to be two 17 millimeter bolts. We're going to go ahead and pull them right out. All right, guys, so we got the caliper off, set it to the side. We're going to have to compress that later, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We went ahead, we took our uh, brake pad return springs off. They're in these four little holes here, one, two, three, four. You can see these brake pads are, are just about at a, you know, between a two and a three millimeter, so they are due to be changed. So we're going to go ahead, slide these old pads out, get them out of the way, and then we're going to remove this caliper bracket. Those look like they might be 19s, but uh, I'll get back to you and let you know exactly what size they are. All right, caliper brackets off. Those were 19 millimeter, uh, so you're going to need a 19 millimeter, uh, millimeter socket and ratchet, or if you're like me, just impact them out with your impact gun and a swivel socket. You'll see. They were right here. We could see these rotors have a little bit of rust on them. Nothing terrible, but he did have a pulsation. So I said, you know what? Instead of taking these to a machine shop and getting them cut, let's just put some new rotors on it. Uh, so we did go with the coated rotors to help prevent future uh, rust buildup. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get our impact screwdriver, remove the set screw, bang the rotor off. All right, we used our impact screwdriver, got our set screw out. Now these rotors have a little threaded insert here for you to thread a nut into to help pull them off the hub. Uh, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna use a big hammer, smack them off. So let me get these off and uh, we're gonna clean the hub off, make sure that's nice and clean. We're gonna get the new rotor, slap it on. So you'll see we got some minor rust buildup on this hub. We're just gonna go ahead and use our whiz wheel like this, clean that up. That way the rotor has a nice clean surface to uh, mate to. All right guys, so we got most of the rust cleaned off of this. It doesn't have to be perfect. We you just want it to have a nice smooth mating surface. Uh, which it has now. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to put our new rotor on. You're going to want to take care to line up the hole with the tapered beveled edges. 
with the hole here in the hub because that's where your set screw is actually going to go back to hold this rotor on while you have no brakes on it. Um, they only use them at the factory so the rotors don't fall off when they're on the assembly line. But uh, I always like to reuse them. So let's get them back on there. We are going to put a very, very, very small dab of anti-seize on here just to prevent these from getting stuck because this did give me a little bit of a hard time coming out. So let's get the rotor on. Let's put the set screw in. And uh, we're going to go ahead and clean off the, uh, the brake hardware. I don't like using aftermarket hardware. I always like to use original equipment whenever I can. So we're going to clean them up, see how they look. If I don't like how they look, we'll go ahead and use the new stuff, but I like to reuse the factory hardware. All right, guys, new rotors on, set screws in. We're going to go ahead, like I said, clean these off. All right, guys, we got our factory hardware nice and clean. We got our 19 millimeter caliper bracket bolts in. I did go ahead and put a little bit of anti-seize on them. Uh, the one of them came out a little rough. So I wanted to make sure I clean that off and put some anti-seize on there. The next thing we're going to do is service this bracket itself. We're going to pull these uh, slide pins out and we're going to grease them up a little bit. We have a special Wagner silicon brake lubricant. I uh, use this stuff on anything internal like that, like the slide pins and things like that. And we're going to use some on this hardware too where the pads ride. So to get these out, it's real easy. You're just going to kind of want to pull on this, separate the boot. Pull it out. We're just going to put a little dab of grease on this, or not grease, the silicone brake parts lubricant. Slide it back in. Do the same thing with the bottom. Uh, the reason I like to use silicone products on these is because it has this little rubber, um, you should call that a bushing on there. And if you use a petroleum product, it'll cause that to swell and actually seize your brakes. So you don't want to use like white lithium grease or any type of grease. You want to use a silicone. So let's get some on there. Put that back in. Do the same thing with the bottom one, then we can go ahead and put our pads in. Guys, we went ahead, put some silicone on there. We got our front brake pad in. I did just want to show you on the back one. Uh, there's two brake pads in your package that are going to have the telltale tabs or the squealers on there. Um, it's probably going to be easiest for you to just match up whatever you know you took off and put the you know the right one back there. Um, if for some reason somebody replaced your brakes and did this wrong you're going to want that tab to be on the leading edge so with the wheel spinning clockwise you're going to want that tab to be on the top of the rotor bracket that way as the rotor spins as you're going forward this tab would hit first and what basically all this does is it starts making noise when your brakes get low so you know hey i better get this thing in the shop and get the brakes done so we're going to lube these tabs up slide the brake pad in and then we're going to put our our return springs back and then we can go ahead and compress that caliper right, guys so to compress this caliper we're going to go ahead and put an old brake pad in there that's basically going to be our spacer there and then we're going to use this ratcheting brake caliper depressor and you're just going to want to slide it in and i love this tool because it's so easy to use you can literally almost do it with one hand once you get it set up so let me just get it set up let me show you exactly how to compress it all right so we got it set up we got some tension on it now literally all you're going to do is spin this in like this and it's going to compress you'll see it our caliper just let me go ahead and finish this off camera and we can slide the caliper back over the pads and put it back together all right guys we got the caliper back on we tightened our 17 millimeter uh, caliper bolts uh, so now we're done with this side uh, we're going to go ahead we're going to move over to the next side um, I'm not going to get that on camera. I think it's kind of monotonous for me to show you guys the same exact thing on the other side. Uh, so what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to finish that side. I'm going to do the rear. I'm going to do the rear in a separate video. Um, but when I'm done doing that, we're going to go ahead, we're going to torque all the wheels down, and then we're going to take the truck for a ride, make sure everything's okay. So hang tight, let me bang out the other side, let me start the rear, and then when we're done, we'll go for a ride. All right, guys, so we're all done. Uh, we went ahead and torqued all four wheels to 94 foot-pounds. That's a factory spec. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to pump this brake pedal a couple times, fill those uh, calipers up with brake fluid. Now they're nice and full. I'm just going to start the truck. And we're going to go ahead and take it for a ride and make sure everything's okay. All right, guys, so here we are driving the ridge line. Uh, I'm going to hit the brakes. It stops nice and straight. Uh, no pulsation, no pulls. I'd call that a job well done. If this video helped you at all, please like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.